PM has programmed a, a Sudoku sol solver in C, and I translated it into JavaScript. And since I'm a doctor, I can tell you we are overdue for the next pandemic. A new digital revolution is upon us. And this time, I'm referring to smart technology. And in particular, smart technology based on machine learning a phenomena which actually has only really taken off in the last two or three years. And if history is a guide, every time you get a change like this, you get an initial gilded age, greater inequality, robber barons, the early masters and adopters of technology. And it takes time before the new means of production are democratized and a new middle class can arise. I believe we are now in a new digital gilded age. There are winners and there are losers. The winners are the supranational tech companies, you know their names, Google, Amazon, Apple, and Facebook, which are growing in political, economic clout. Why? Because they sit on top of mountains of specific and very often personal data. And there will be losers, those who have not been able to scale up and have lost their jobs due to disruptive changes. Automation will put... Automation in the past took away many blue-collar jobs, but pattern recognition of today and tomorrow will make many white-collar jobs redundant. It is true that new jobs will be created, but my worry is that they will not be created fast enough to replace the old jobs, and this will cause further dislocation and fractious domestic politics. There will be countries that are afraid of change, and fearing competition will question the value of the current liberal world order. On the other hand, nations like Singapore believe that we need to master the new technologies, face competition head-on, double down on interdependence, integration, openness, and to seek win-win cooperation. This division and divergence will grow more acute as technological adoption accelerates. And so, ladies and gentlemen, this is our current predicament. We know that technological disruption will erode barriers, borders, it will revolutionize business models, it will shift production bases, and new technology hubs will emerge. No advantage is engraved in stone. And we have to be prepared to go beyond conventional markets. We have to be prepared to sometimes break safe models and to capitalize on new opportunities. And some of these new opportunities are right at our doorstep. ASEAN, a dynamic region, a rising middle class, boundless potential for the next few decades at least. More than half the population in ASEAN is under the age of 30, and many are digital natives who have even skipped landlines completely. That's why we launched the ASEAN Smart Cities Network last year when we were chairman of ASEAN. We will have to continue to strengthen our air, our sea, and our digital connectivity, deepening our economic and investment links with partners across the globe. And one of my favorite pictures, which I spend more time looking at, is the map of submarine cables. These are the new digital maritime silk roads. It carries data, the currency of the future, and we must entrench Singapore's hub status in these new communication routes. And I'm from Victoria Junior College. Oh, so shame. as we've seen in the arrest of Meng Wanzhou, the USA is increasingly pressurizing its allies to freeze out Chinese companies from participating in nation's implementation of 5G networks. So when inaction and attempts to be neutral may be interpreted as a preference for one country over the other, how, um, where does Singapore stand regarding this issue? And how do we remain neutral in this instance? My starting point is what I said just now during my speech, that we need the ability 
to say no from time to time in a principled and disciplined way. When we say a principled and disciplined way, our usual recourse in the case of Singapore is the rule of law and in particular when it involves states, international law. And we reserve the right to say no to our neighbours and no to the superpowers if a request is unreasonable or contravenes international law. I'm not going to give you a specific answer to a specific case, but I want you to understand our considerations as and when requests come in. And believe me, requests come in all the time. And each time we have to look at it, look at it from all perspectives and then take a decision. And that's why I remind people who sometimes say, look, you know, Singapore, you're a little red dot, you're a small state, why don't you be more obliging? My answer is that we can't be simply more obliging just because someone is a friend or someone is a big in a position to exercise leverage against us. Because once you compromise and oblige in an unprincipled manner, believe me, the next request will come in fast and furious. And people will expect you to compromise on the basis of how hard they push you.